Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, uh, basically, um, I wanted to share what I've learned mostly on what not to do in your freelance business, um, or what I wish I knew when I started five years ago. Actually, it's been six years ago. I was laid off um, of my IT director job and uh, had already picked up one freelance client and decided, let's try freelancing. And uh, I've been busy ever since. So I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, things you need to think about if you don't have. And, and uh, basically, um, let's go ahead and uh, what we'll cover. Um, the most important thing is having a process. Having a process that will walk your clients through from when they first contact you until you hand off their website. And you need to have a consistent process. And you know, you get all excited because you're getting a new job, and you know, you immediately start thinking, um, "Oh, I'm going to use this theme. I'm going to use these plugins." And and but basically, what you've got to do is you've got to train that client through a process. And we're also going to talk about uh, getting clients because that's one of the questions I get a lot: um, how to handle those incoming leads, whether they're uh, somebody who calls you out of the blue or whether it's somebody you actually network and meet. Um, qualifying clients. Not every client is for you. It's okay to walk away and say no. That was one of the hardest things for me to learn, but it's the most liberating. Um, how to handle client meetings. Uh, positioning and nurturing a client while they're in that decision-making mode. Um, resources for proposals and contracts. Uh, um, how to speed up your design process, um, development, delivery, maintenance, and re reoccurring revenue, and some optional pricing models. Now, this is a lot to cover, so it's going to be very brief, but you're more than welcome to reach out to me if you want to discuss it further. Um, before I get to the finding of clients, on having a process, the best way to describe it is think about when you go to a restaurant. Um, I went to Longhorns last night with my husband. So we walk in, we go to the hostess stand, they take our name, they give me the little buzzer. Um, you know, 15 minutes later, we get seated. You know, they, they bring you the bread, they take your drink order. You know, everything's in a process. And every time you go to a restaurant, that process is the same. You sit down, they bring your drink, take your drink order, they bring you the drinks, they bring you bread. They take your meal order, they, they bring you your salads, they bring you the meal, you might order dessert, they hand you the check and you leave. Having clients come in should be that same type of process. You should have a process to walk them through and that way they, they have an expectation, you have an expectation and it will, you can move them along in the process. And so I'm going to give you some um, helpful tools and some uh, suggestions on how to create your own process that's going to work for you. Uh, before I start, I'm going to tell you that I got these, uh, this process is kind of a combination of what I learned in a course called WP Elevation with Troy Dean. Uh, I took the course uh, late last summer. It lasted about two months. It was probably the, the best money I ever spent on how to run my WordPress uh, business. And uh, he only does it two or three times a year. There's a current one right now. And uh, uh, if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can go to WPElevation.com and put your name in, um, and they'll email you information about that when the next thing goes around. The other um, person that's been real helpful in me is Nathan Ingram. He's here at WordCamp, and he's, here, he's hiding here somewhere in the room right over there. Uh, he does an advanced coaching session, which has helped me even further to fine tune my, my business processes. So um, you could actually reach out to Nathan, uh, catch up with him over at that table if you're interested in more information about his program. Uh, first of all, finding your market. Now, when you're first starting out, you pretty much have to take what comes along. But uh, do you need a niche uh, market? My, my niche right now is churches and nonprofits and retirement communities. And uh, 
I didn't set out to do churches and retirement communities. Well, I used to work at a church, so that was kind of given, and I understand how they work. And so I know church websites, so that's why I started doing churches. And I have about eight church websites on, on Retainer. Um, I'm their webmaster, and um, that's the main source of my monthly income. Uh, retirement communities, I hooked up with one locally, started doing their stuff. They work with consultants. That consultant moves to another retirement community. I get that retirement. I've gotten six in the last two years because of one job. Uh, so find, find a niche that is an automatic referral network where the, the people in that niche get together, meet, and they can spread your name. Uh, you'll probably stumble upon them. It's kind of hard to say, oh, I want to do doctors and lawyers and that's all I want to do um, when you haven't done any doctors and lawyers. So, uh, and I get outside that niche. I just did a lawyer's website. So it's actually going to go live tomorrow. Um, so I do work outside my niche, but uh, I'm actually picky. All my, all my work is by referral. So um, I rarely ever get a cold call for asking for work. So look for those clients that can be an automatic referral. Um, position yourself as an expert. You may not be at the level of some of the other people in this room, but you know more than your client. And that's all you have to know. You know more than they do, so in your eyes, you need, they need to see you as an expert. Okay, um, weed out the tire kickers. Uh, Pretty much, if somebody calls me up, talks to me 10 minutes, and asks me for a quote, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, I actually have a website worksheet, and you're welcome to go on my website and, and look at it. Uh, um, if you email me, I will send it to you in a Word document. Um, it, is, it is a form. It's got like five sections, not real long, but it asks them stuff that they haven't thought about. You know, what are their goals? Where do they see themselves in a year? I want them to start thinking about the project as a goal-based thing because that way I'm positioning this project as a value to them rather than I just need a new website. So as, and I actually use that website worksheet to fill out the proposal. Basically, I'm taking what they said, putting it in the proposal, and putting a price on it. So if you get them to fill it out, then you have also an agenda when you have your client meeting. You, you have all the first level questions out, what they want, what they're looking for, and now you can dig deep when it comes to the um, client meeting. You now have a whole list of questions for them. You're not just trying to think of questions on the fly. And usually I have a whole list of questions when I'm talking to them based on their proposal. And, uh, so, and I ask about their budget up front. What is your budget? I used to be afraid to ask them, you know, you know, I was like, well, you know, how much do you, you know, want to spend? And now, you know, it's like the second question out of my mouth, what's your budget? And uh, even if they give me a low one, I, I'm not going to say, well, I'm not going to do a site for $1,600, um, and I won't, but I'm going to start positioning them to look at a value. Chris Lima did a great thing um, on positioning for value. He wanted a swimming pool. He lives in San Diego. Um, he wanted a swimming pool and their budget was 25000 They bring in a pool builder and they told him everything they wanted. They wanted a waterfall, they wanted an infinity line, and all this stuff. And the pool builder said, well, I can do that for, you know, $65,000. And, uh, of course, that was not their $25,000 budget. But they ended up spending like 45000 because of all the value that was tied to that pool, they, they of course scaled back their sources, but he was okay about spending $45,000 for a pool versus $25,000 because of the way the salesman handled it and the way the pool company handled it, positioning him to like put value on that and, and move it up a level. Um, don't rush to give out prices. You can do a ballpark, you know, well, I did one, I'm doing a ministry website right now, and it's, it's pretty basic. I don't do a lot of, you know, no surprises websites, and it's pretty basic. And it was about my, my base price, which is around $3,200, and so I gave him that, that ballpark, and it was that what I gave him because nothing new came up when um, I actually got his website proposal. So... Uh, um, if they don't have their act together and they don't know what they want, sell a discovery session. 
Now, some people do this for free. I don't. Um, that's going to be a couple hours, three, two or three hours out of my time that I can't afford not to be, you know, billable hours. So uh, you've got to uh, get that information somehow, and you can actually sit down with them. If it's a local, go in there and have like a three-hour brainstorming session. Get everybody in there that's going to be involved in the project and start fleshing it out. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Okay, score your potential clients. Like I said, some of them you don't want to work with. You get that feeling right away. Look for the red flags. I had a recent one. I have to tell you, this is a short little story. It was uh, the first weekend of the playoffs, football playoffs. I'm a big fantasy football player, and it was uh, New England and Denver Broncos or New England, whoever New England was playing because I was excited because New England was on TV and Tom Brady was my fantasy football quarterback. So uh, the phone rings and of course it's like a minute before halftime and I'm not answering the phone because I'm watching football. So my husband goes up and answered, oh sure, she's right here. <laughs> and I'm of course, you know, you know, after 28 years he doesn't recognize the spousal eye roll. <laughs> Don't give me the phone. Well it was somebody who wanted a website. This is Saturday afternoon. His first question of my, I had the hardest time finding your phone number. And I said, well, why didn't you go to my website and just fill out my web, you know, my contact form? Oh, I don't do contact forms. I had to Google you and this, and I actually found your number, and I'm, and I'm like, um, that's the last time I put my name on the, on the phone bill. And uh, so he found me, and he, he was a local person, needed a website, um, did business to business uh, uh, displays, uh, LED displays. And uh, so I started talking to him, and he, I mean, it was like one red flag after another. You know, first red flag, he won't fill out uh, my contact form. I said, well, so then I said, well, the best way to get this project started is if you'll, I'll send you a website worksheet. Uh, if you'll fill that out, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, okay, well, I'll give you the name of several um, designers in Atlanta that will probably like to work with you. Um, you know, have a nice weekend. <laughs> and he was like, wait, 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 you know, you wait. And uh, so I said, well, so you don't want to, you, do you want me to come to Peachtree City and sit down and have a meeting with you and go over what I, all the information I need? Yes. And I said, well, that'll take a couple hours and that's $150 an hour and it will be applied to your website project. Wait, you want me to pay? I said, well, you're not gonna do this. So you're gonna take two hours out of my time. So yes, you're gonna have to pay for that. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll fill it out. And I knew exactly how he was gonna fill it out. And then the next red flag was, I really know what I want my website to look like. I've designed it in Word. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you don't need me. You need, you need somebody who can write code. I said, you can probably find somebody's nephew who can do that for you. Um, I'm not going to do that. And uh, I said, you would be hiring me as the expert in, in web design. And I said, uh, I, I'm not going to design something that looks like it was designed in Word. And uh, so I actually had to tell him no five times in the next week because once I told him, no, I'm not going to work with you, here's some names of some people, um, he just wanted to work with me more and <laughs> more and more. And he, finally, I'm like, look, my calendar's full till June. If you want to revisit this, you know, maybe in mid-May, that's fine. But I'm going to email you, you know, a list of people. So I don't know who he ended up going with, but uh, um, it's okay if you need the work to work with those PETA clients you know, the pain in the asterisk clients. Um, so go ahead, charge them more, and really make sure that you control that project because they'll want to take over. Um, meet with the decision makers. Now this is hard when you're doing like committee-based. I do the retirement um, communities and those are committee-driven websites. They'll take a lot longer than other ones because there's not just one decision maker, there's a bunch. But uh, you meet with all of them, have an agenda, move that meeting along. And uh, basically, you're interviewing them to see if you want to do a proposal. 
Stop thinking of it as the other way and acting like, you know, you're desperate for the work. You're, you're there and, like, I'm seeing if I want to work with you rather than thinking that they might want to work with you. Okay? Um, if you possible, you know, use your iPhone or phone and record the meeting. Ask if it's okay first. Don't do it, you know, under the table. But that way you won't miss anything. If you're too busy writing notes on something, you might miss something, and you can go back and listen to it. And one of the things I like to do after I do this is I do a recap, and I send them an email of the recap of the meeting before I actually do the proposal. Um, ask those second-level questions. Why? What else? Keep saying, what else? Is there anything else? Because there's something, sometimes there's something they're not telling you, and eventually you'll get to you know, a deeper issue of what, a problem they're trying to solve. Um, and ask, who's going to manage that website when it's done? This is where you can start positioning them to sell them a care plan, a maintenance package. Um, if they don't know, then mention it. Well, I actually put that in my proposal. I put my, my care plans. Um, so they know up front that that's something I offer. And it's not such a shock to them at the end. Um, nurture your clients. If they're, if they're meeting with other people, you know, send them the email, um, uh, a reference to a blog post that you read that's relevant to them. Um, keep your name in, their, in front of them. Even if they don't end up taking the job or they've put it off because of budget, um, follow up. Nurture them along. And I actually have a list of, like, template emails that I can use uh, to quickly send off an email. Um, if you think it's, it's expensive to hire a professional to do the job, then wait till you hire an amateur. Okay, I, I love this quote. And uh, I, found, I found it this week, and I thought, ooh, I've got to stick that one in there. Because, um, you know, I tell people, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not selling websites for $1,600 anymore, and that's what I did, you know, five years ago. Uh, most of my projects are over $5,000, um, and, you know, I never had anybody tell me no. I think I've only lost one project that I did a proposal on in the last three years. Since most of mine are referral, they're only coming to me. Very rarely do they. Um, and the one that turned me down just didn't have the budget, and they're going to wait until fall, <laughs> so they're going to come back. Um, when you do the design, have a system for doing design that will speed the process up. You may still be doing Photoshop mock-ups. That's okay. I used to do them that way. Because of mobile responsive, it's kind of hard to do that. So what I do is I can do a whip up a quick prototype with a Beaver Builder and a Genesis child theme. And kind of all I want them to see is the front page and an inside page, or if it has a particular something that they need, maybe a third page. Um, for a church, it would be like, what does a sermon page look like? Um, I use Genesis Framework. I'm a Genesis girl, so um, I know that like the back of my hand now. I didn't five years ago, but there's such a good community out there, and there's so many tutorials online that I can, if there's something I need to know how to do in Genesis, I can quickly find it. Um, I use Desktop Server to start my um, development locally, and uh, it's free up to three installs. But I have a base install that has WordPress, all the plugins that I normally put on a site, the Genesis uh, um, framework theme, and I have it all ready. I can spin up a de development site in literally 10 seconds. So I don't have to sit there and install WordPress and install all my plugins, and then I'm ready to go. I just throw the um, uh, a child theme in there and I start designing. Um, I want to speed that process up. It used to take me two or three days, and one of the mistakes I used to make is I would give them design options. I would do like two or three. Well, I could do it this way, or I can do it this way, and then the final design was kind of a mesh between the two. I don't do that anymore. You know, here's your website. Um, I really think about what they need, and I think about the users, who's going to be using the website. I design the website for the audience. And this is a hard thing to get some people to understand because they think they know what they want on their website. For instance, churches. Well, we want this, and we want our mission statement, and we want this. And I'm like, no, you don't. You want, you want to show 
people that are coming to your website that are new, that are thinking about visiting your church, where they can get the information of what are your service times, where do I park, what about my kids, how should I dress? That's what they want to know, and that's what we're going to give them. We're going to give them a big call to action that I'm new and give them that information in one click. The rest of the home page, yeah, we can put the event calendar, we can do this, but we've got to design that main call to action for your target audience. Okay, uh, proposals and contracts, something I used to not do. If you're not doing contracts and uh, with your clients, this will be the last day you don't do that. <laughs> you need to have it. I have a template that I use um, for writing my proposals and also for my contracts. Uh, I list the goals, what they need, what the solution is. And in the solution, the only time I mention WordPress is I'm going to use WordPress as your content management system. I don't talk to them about WordPress. I never mention plugins. I do in my pr uh, proposal mention that if, if premium plugins are involved that I will pay for the first year uh, of that plugin if license renewal is on them unless they're on a website care plan. If they're on a website care plan, I will handle the license renewals for those premium plugins and they won't ever have to worry about it. Um, my frequently asked questions because you're going to be using terminology that they don't know. So define it in there. Have a little frequently asked question about hosting. Because some people don't understand the difference between domain names and web hosting. So tell them what it is. Define what a bug is. Um, have a master services agreement. Uh, that's your contract. That's the thing they sign. And basically it says, what's outlined in this proposal is what I'm going to do. If you want anything beyond that proposal, We'll requote that. So, you know, cut off scope, scope creep at the knees. Yes, you can, you know, take that with a grain of salt. There might be minor things, but, you know, when they come back and say, oh, I've decided I want to sell my book online, well, that's a whole different ballgame than just building a, an author's website. So, have that master services agreement. Um, one of the big things content is due before I start development. Yep, yeah. I will not do it. Do it first thing you give me your deposit check, and then I'll do the design prototype. I will not touch your project again until I have all the content. Now the reason is because before I started this process, I still have projects that are now a year old, four, that are in the. Uh, I love this. Got this term from Nathan. The GOK clients. God only knows when they're going to finish their project. So uh, I actually have a, um, the whiteboard, the sticky whiteboard that you stick on the wall, the, the paper. And I have my different columns, what proposals are, need to be written, what proposals are out, what's in development, what's ready to launch, and the GOK column. And uh, um, every once, every no, two or three weeks, I send those clients an email and say, you know, and the, because I didn't have this in my contract, and I got this from Nathan, is have a thing in your contract about suspended and abandoned projects. If it's been more than 30 days, payment in full is due before I start working on your project again, along with the content. If they're abandoned, you know, then it's, it's gone. You know, it's, af it's after 120 days. You know, your project's dead. If you want me to do it again, we'll requote it and start from scratch, and it'll be another deposit. So uh, that way you can stop that, that, those projects that drag out for a year, or as Adam had in the uh, um, last session I went to, two and a half years. Um, uh, make sure you lay, lay out your scope of work, what you're going to do and what. So if it's an e-commerce site, I'm going to enter 10 products for you. It's up to you to enter the next 65. I'm only going to do 10 and I'm going to teach you how to add the rest. So they won't come back, well, I really don't have time to put those other products in. Well, you know, then you're going to be selling 10 products or you can pay me X and I'll put them in for you. Um, what are your hosting requirements? Make sure you put that in your contract that it has to support WordPress. 
because I actually had one um, that wanted me to install it on a SharePoint server. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, but you know, that's for SharePoint. It's not for WordPress. So um, define what a bug is. Just because it's not working the way they expected it to work does not mean it's a bug, okay? Now, a white screen of death, yeah, that's a bug, okay? Um, and then keep bringing up those, in your conversations, website care plans. Well, when, you, when I hand this website off to you, you're going to be doing this, this, and this, or, you know, remember, you can hire me to do that for you. Um, have a timeline. Now, do they always stick to the timeline? No. Um, but you need that to schedule multiple jobs and you don't end up like you know sometimes I have where I have like because of my past clients that are dragging their feet um, and my new projects that are moving right along you know I end up with sometimes a gazillion jobs at once and I, I'm trying to get those past clients off and I actually got four of them off in the last two weeks because I kept pestering them um, design and prototyping, development, testing. Give yourself enough time to do this. And so six to eight weeks is normal for me for a, a project right now. Uh, a little bit longer if they need a logo design because that usually takes a couple weeks and some, and some revisions. And my contract says you get one design and two rounds of the revisions. That's it. I'm not gonna sit there and do 10, 10 different designs and different color schemes just because you know you think well this might look better and uh, training you're gonna have to train them if they're gonna take over that website train them and uh, I'm gonna talk about some tools for that uh, on the development I already talked about this use a system to spin up websites desktop server WP engine does transferable installs so I have my sites on WP engine so I, I've been spinning up uh, transferable installs and then their des development works uh, website is under a password they have to have a login and password to view it so I can let them look at it and then I change the password um, so until I'm ready for them to see it again and then I send them the new password so uh, that way they're not stalking me as I'm designing it and uh, they're they see it you know something where I I did half of something and I walk away and they're like, well, this doesn't look right. Well, it's not done. So now I make it so, <laughs> so they can't see it. Um, desktop server, WP, and Pantheon. Pantheon gives free agency accounts for doing installs like this. So talk to them out there about their um, agency accounts. And you can spin up dev sites um, for them and then transfer them right over to hosting. Uh, delivery. Have a checklist. You're going to forget something, then have a list. I have an actual Google Doc with a whole bunch of things. You know, it includes Woo, you know sections on WooCommerce and things that may not be on their website, but it's going to help me remember not to do things. And sometimes I add things. Oh, I need to check to make sure when I do move this site that this you, these URLs in this system migrate as well. Because you know, like on sometimes if people have to have a slider. Um, some sliders don't migrate the URLs for the slides, so you have to look. Um, have an offboarding process to getting them off basically development and handing it off and getting on their care plans or getting them uh, set up to maintain their website themselves. WP101 is a, a plugin. It's, I think, $19 a month it was when I used it. You uh, can put uh, tutorials in the back end of your website for your clients. It tells you how to use web, uh, WordPress. The other one is video user manual. Now I've switched over to that one um, because it also has in-page videos. So when you're on a page editing and they want to know how to embed a video, they can click the help button at the top and everything that's related to working on a page comes down in a link to a video. So it'll say how to embed a, a YouTube video. Cl click and it will walk them through that. Um, and you can add your own, both of these you can add your own custom videos. Um, Sidekick is another little plugin that will pop up and give them helpful hints in the background. Um, and uh, don't be afraid to ask for referrals and, and uh, client testimonies. You put those on your website. And so I, I started asking, and it's amazing, they're giving them to me. 
nobody said no. Um, so don't be afraid, you know, you're, oh, I'm afraid what they might say. <laughs> um, use that and then it will help you get referrals. Uh, reoccurring revenue. Website care plans. You need to not live job to job. So start coming up ways that you can have that mailbox money every month so you don't have to depend on fe that, that feast and the famine cycle. So website care plans. Have plans. Um, if you're slightly more technical, you know, think about being a, a hosting your client site along with the website care plans. Now, I wouldn't host a client who didn't have wasn't on a website care plan because I want to be able to control all that um, the plug-in updates and things like that. Uh, just recently signed up with Liquid Web, who's here, uh, to actually do um, hosting for my clients. Um, I don't do email support. Now, I have an IT background, so yeah, I can do email support. But this is what happens. My last IT job at a church in Mobile, Alabama, I still get phone calls when a pastor buys a new phone. <laughs> What's my password? How do I set up my phone? Believe it or not. And I don't work there anymore. So unless you want to be interrupted at your vacation and every Christmas and birthday of your clients, you don't do email. Send them to Google, um, Google Apps. Move them to Google Apps, and then go it's Google's job to handle their email. OK? Um, subscription pricing. This is something I'm playing around with. If you have a lot, if you're in an area where people are not paying a lot, then think of a different pricing model, like Evermore has. Charge a setup fee, $500,000, $1,500, and a monthly fee, and put them on a two-year contract. You could even include hosting on that. So you're still going to get your four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 from your clients, depending on what you charge, but they're just going to spread it out over time. And at the end of that two years, you're positioned to, up, to resell them a new design. So if you have clients that can't pay a lot of money, then think of it that way. Um, oh, I've already gone that. Okay. Um, tools. These are some of the tools that I've looked at, and I'll tell you which ones I use. For proposals, bid sketch. I use bid sketch because I actually have my proposal in a template in there, and I can just go in basically and fill in the blank. I can email the, the proposal and the contract to the client. I can see when they read it. Every time they go back and read it, I get an email. And they can sign the contract online. And as soon as they sign the contract online, I touch base with them and send them an invoice. Or take their credit card over the phone and put it in Stripe. Uh, project management, oh, the proposals, 17 hats. I'm looking at, heavily at 17 hats because it kind of does everything. It's kind of a CRM, uh, proposals, invoices, um, and I like it that I, I have certain clients that have to pay me by check, and they have to go through the whole purchase order thing, but my problem is remembering to send them the monthly invoice. So uh, in here, I can, that's something I can actually schedule. I can kind of schedule everything in here. Um, Proposify is another one. And I know there's a lot of those tools out those. These are the main ones I've looked at. Um, project management, Basecamp, Asana, Trello. I'm all about Trello because I'm a list girl. I love lists. And that's just list after list. And I can move things from one thing to the other. Um, Great program. Uh, teamwork, Podio, 17, hat, 17 Hats is also another one. Uh, does that as well. Not to the extent that the other ones do. Updates. Have a support email where your updates, where people request updates go. So it's not intermixed with your regular email and things get lost. Um, you can hook that up with uh, Zendesk, Help Scout. Um, managing, also managing your websites. Uh, iThemes iSync to manage multiple websites, manage WP, some people use. I use Infinite WP because it's free um, and I have like 60 sites in it. Uh, I can update, every time Backup Buddy comes out with an update, I can update all 60 sites with one click instead of having to log into the back end. Uh, WPMU Dev just came out with the hub, same concept, put all your websites in one control panel, manage them from there. Um, 
If you don't want to do care plan outsourcing, go WP. Hire them. They have an agency package where they'll do like five websites for $250. Well, you charge your clients $100 a month, get go get WP to do the updates, and you're making $250 profit, and you're not doing any of the work. So um, if you get busy enough, and this is where I'm in the process of, I actually, I actually interviewed <laughs> a virtual assistant this week. Um, Finding a virtual assistant to actually take over like the updates and things when you get to the point, you get reached to the point of saturation where you can't do all the work. Um, you can hire a virtual assistant, um, virtual staff finder, online jobs, PH, outsourcing angel. Those are ways where you can hire either developers or just regular assistants or even designers to pick up the work and pay them, you know, a fraction of what you're charging. Um, most of them are in the Philippines. Some great, great workers in the Philippines, and they love doing this. Love it. And uh, you can actually take off some of the workload yourself and the the, the maintenance tasks, the things you should do over and over again. Um, do you have anybody have any questions, Claudia? Um, Creating a prototype for the client. If it's on desktop server, how do they? Oh, I, that's where I, I use backup buddy, put it up that. If I, it depends on what the project is, whether I do it locally. Um, I just started doing w, WP Engine installs, but I did the same thing in WP Engine. I created a, it's called WP Base Install on WP Engine. And when you spin up a um, transferable, you can copy it. So I actually have my main website and then I have all my transfers and I have one that's just set up that has the Genesis and all the plugins in it, Beaver Builder, everything, and I can spin up. It takes them about 10 minutes before they send me an email and the install is ready to go. And then if my, I, try, of course, try to position my clients to use WP Engine or some other managed WordPress hosting, whether it's SiteGround or my hosting or something that's not, you know, um, cheap web hosting. If they want shared web hosting, I'm going to send them to SiteGround. Uh, if they're on bad web hosting, I'm going to move them. And uh, so, next question? Yes, ma'am. So, how do you know when they call with a question that the problem is something you've done and not something that the problem is that they're going to I ask a lot of questions. And um, I actually, I want to show them to show me what it's doing, so I'll send them to Team Viewer and actually ask them to do a remote control session and actually show me what's going on. Um, and first of all, it kind of freaks them out that I can do, you know, <laughs> that does that. But I can see what they're doing and I can actually walk them through. If it's something that they just don't know how to do, um, you know, I, I need to put this video on here. I said, well, there's a great tutorial right there in the back end. Just go there, look at it. If you don't understand it after you've watched the video, you, you know, call me right back. We'll do a remote session and I'll walk you through it. They rarely call back. Do you ever do any, like, I, I assume you keep a backup of what you deliver? I um, make sure that their website's back. Yeah, I keep a backup and then I put backup buddy on every site I build and uh, it's set to schedule um, backups. And I have one that just actually a monthly backup that goes to my Amazon S3, even if they're not a website, they don't know this, even if they're not a website care plan client, because I don't wanna have to rebuild that site. Um, and, and I've actually had that happen. I actually had that where half my client site, I think it was a server upgrade, half my client site was gone. like. The whole WP admin folder was gone. The uploads were gone, everything. And I'm like, okay. And so I just went to Amazon S3, just copied all the files up because I had an update that was a week old, threw them all up. His website was back up in the time it took to FTP the files. So, uh, yeah, you know, I don't trust them to do the backups and stuff, and I just want to make sure I always have a copy, but that's just because I'm a control freak and, and, and I'm anal. So... <laughs> Sue? Yeah, Melanie, uh, can you talk a little bit about affiliate accounts? Do you have yes. 
And I, I'm really upfront. I mean, these are my affiliates. These are the these are the companies I work for, and these are affiliate counts. So, um, you know, I have WP Engine, I have SiteGround, um, I have affiliates for the products I use. I don't have affiliates for products I don't use. So, um, you know, I only have affiliates for the hosting that I would recommend or the plugins that I recommend. Yes. That's what I have. Okay. I have the premium version, um, so because I have. Oh yeah, I've used it. I've actually pushed it through their system uh, up to different web hosts, and it works. And you can pull down too. Yeah. I ask them, I have a content writer. I have a content writer that I can, uh, and I know what she charges. Um, and uh, so I can say, you know, if you don't have the content, I can put you in touch with a content writer. Now, here's another one. There's a web, Speedlancer, speedlancer.com. You can get content creation there fairly inexpensively. Um, I don't know their quality. Um, just learned about them recently. So, uh, but for content writing, especially if you're not a writer, but you can put them and they have, they have you know, hundreds of writers on, on contract. So if it's about a specific thing like, you know, an automotive parts store or something, put it up there and they can actually give you some generic content to fill the site. You know, it's not going to be like probably the best search engine optimization but it's going to be content better than the two lines they'll probably give you. So, you know, we've been in business 15 years. Come by and visit us, you know. So, you know, you want to have uh, um, at least enough content on the page to at least have your page rank some, somewhere. Pardon me? Oh, it's Speed Lancer. And another, there's another system called Gather Content. Um, GatherContent.com, which is a system for getting your content from your clients. Gather content. Um, haven't used it, but, uh, but watched a few of their, their seminars. If you get on their mailing list, they have lots of great ideas on getting content for your clients. Yes, sir. They keep the website updated and all the plugins, and they'll do uh, um, updates. Basically, you can actually set it up so. The, they come like email support at MGA Creative Designs. It it comes to me, and a copy will go to um, Go WP, and it will automatically create a job ticket. So you can you, know, you just set forward and go to Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can, and then they'll work with you on setting that up. It's actually fairly simple. They'll just do it all. They'll do it all. It just goes in their job queue. Yeah. So. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. For me, it's like the the last time we we got together. Not not 120 days from the beginning of the project, but the last time. Okay, you know, I'm waiting on your content. So those those are where my four jobs are. I'm waiting for the content. So, um, uh, and it's gone. You know, I haven't heard from them. So at that point, and that's what I wish. I have those four projects that, you know, I actually got one back because I reached out to them and I got one back, and. Uh, of course, she said, I'll have that content to you by the weekend. Of course, you know, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> um, and what I think what's really holding her up is, is not the content. It's her picture. She doesn't want her picture on the website and, or the way she looks now. She wants to put something older. And I'm like, well, you know, a 20-year-old picture is not going to do when they come in and see you um, for, for counseling. <laughs> Just, you know, you're not going to be what they expect. So you need to get a professional headshot done, not just, you know, a picture of you at, in your backyard. So, um, yes, ma'am. Um, do you have employees or um, I'm actually in the process of getting a virtual assistant um, to take over the website updates and um, some of the, the prototyping and design um, because 
I am busy, and uh, so I'm just going to actually work with virtual assistants. I do uh, reach out to developers when I, there's a problem I can't figure out. So, mm -mm. I'm a one man person. Yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, since I use Genesis, I um, have the Genesis theme installed. I have uh, generally uh, Genesis Simple Edits for editing, uh, Genesis uh, Simple Sidebars so I can make custom sidebars, and uh, I usually have my favorite events um, plug-in. I have it in there. Um, because I always go in there and see, well, how can I do this? And I play around with my site. Um, Beaver Builder, I, I have Beaver Builder, uh, Page Builder in there. Um, I don't always use it on every site, but if the site requires things that are harder for the client to do, like columns, nothing beats Beaver Builder for doing co co columns for content for the client. And with Beaver Builder, you can turn off all the modules you don't want them to have access to. So on the one, the ministry site I'm building, I have Beaver Builder on there on some of the pages for columns and maps and Google Maps. It was a column for their address and a map. So those are the only modules I have turned on on that whole site. After the big long list, they have two. So uh, I just want them to have what they need to do their job and uh, to make it easier for editing. Uh, everything else I turn off. Claudia? I missed something about the, getting back to the desktop server. Mm -hmm. um, how are you using uh, a subdomain on your site to show them at that point, or are you making sure they already are set up with? If I put it on my domain, which I'm starting not to do because um, it's, on, it's on Bluehost and it's getting slow. So that's why I've moved over to WP Engine. Um, I do a subdomain, so it would be like GACPR.MGA Creative Designs. You know, I, I do it as a subdomain. They already have something set up, you wouldn't put it up there yet. Oh, no, I'm not going to give it on their server because they haven't paid me. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> um, and to finish answering your question about the plugins, um, Yoast. I always put Yoast. Um, WordFence is my is is my go-to security plugin because I like the reports it gives me every Monday of how many um, you know attacks it's stopped and and all the stuff it's done. Um, I ha have iTheme Security Pro, but uh, um, I don't put it on very many sites because I really like the reports I get from WordFence and. The fact that it will tell me, you know, who's logging into the site and what access they have, and and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Most of them I don't have a lot on there, um, simply because uh, sometimes I use short short codes, short codes UI, um, no, short codes ultimate. That's what it is. If I need uh, my client to be able to build like buttons and things, um, so uh, rather than having them do a short code, they can just click a button and fill in the blanks and, yeah. What do you use for landing pages? Um, well, Beaver Builder builds landing pages. So um, did that, did a whole site with Genesis and Beaver Builder for a retirement community. It was about 100 pages and sat there and showed the marketing lady. Now, they, took, they decided that they're going to do the updates on the site. Um, that'll last about two months before they'll hire me back to do it, because that's happened on every one of them. Um, but showed her how to build a landing page. And I thought she was going to cry, because first of all, it's just showing her that she can edit the website from the front end with Beaver Builder and see the changes before she clicks save. She was like, this is unbelievable. And now, now when you do a landing page for an event, you can just come in here and, and um, pick the template and just put your stuff in and click save and you'll have your URL. And she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So um, yeah, it's just, I, I love Beaver Builder for building um, complicated designs very quickly. Anybody else? Yes. Um. I've, uh, I saw in a previous talk on the Builder, page, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they talked about Beaver Builder and indicated that it was, is it a one-time fee or is it an annual fee? 
Um, I thought it was a one-time fee. Um, they may have changed it. Um, I thought it was an annual one, too, so I didn't say anything. Um, yeah, I have the agency version, um, and you can white label it if you want. I don't always do that, but uh, if I do white label it, I put their logo on it, not mine. <laughs> so uh, it looks like it's something built for them. So um, that's, uh, that's really the only difference between the pro version and the agency version is the white, white labeling. So I had a coupon, so I got the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about coupons. Anything else? Well, thanks for coming, everyone.